First thing to do for this project is make sure that you're keeping everything in a single folder. Um, this is really important because we're going to have a series of links linked to our InDesign file. And if you don't keep them all together, they will be unlinked and your file will print out very pixelated. So once I know that I've put all of my uh, Photoshop files into a folder, I'm going to go ahead and open up InDesign. And then I'm going to do a File, New, Document. And here I'm going to type in a single page width, which is 6.5 by 9. I only have to do a single page because we have facing pages turned on. Uh, I'm then going to set my margins to zero. And I'm also going to open up the uh, bleed and slug dropdown. And under bleed, I'm going to type in 0.125. And a little hint, you just have to type in 0.125 once and hit tab and they will all uh, come out the same because they're linked here at the end. Then I'm going to say OK. And I get my first page up. And the way I had uh, taught you to do this, I had had you uh, skip the first page to begin with. So we'll start that way. And uh, then we're going to use a rectangle tool. Um, oh, and first I should say, uh, if you're working with an existing document and you did not set up your, um, your bleed, you can do it under File document setup and then just expand the bleed slug area and you can type it in here and it will update it. Same with page size and with facing pages. So then I'm going to go ahead and put in my uh, picture frames. And to insert an image, first I want to make sure that my Photoshop image is actually the right size. So I want you to open up each of your images um, with Photoshop and take a look at the size. To do so, go to Image, Image Size, and check here. It should be 13 by 9. If it's not, make sure that Constrain Proportions is turned on and change it to 13 and if 9 is not correct, you're going to leave it. You don't want to change here, otherwise you will end up uh, squishing or stretching your document. So then I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, and make sure it's at 300. I'm going to say OK. And now that was just a little bit of difference. So I'm going to go into canvas size. And here's where I'm going to take off that additional 0 0.04. So, and I can decide where I want to shave it off if this is the image. So in this case it's going to take a little bit off of both sides, that extra space. Um, if it was, um, if I wanted to, I knew that one side was really really important on the edge, I could put this over on the important edge and it'll shave it off of the opposite edge. And I can decide what is going to be the background color, but in this case I'm making it smaller so there isn't going to be a background color. Uh, it's going to give you this warning that you're going to be clipping. I'm going to say OK. And it just took a, a really teeny tiny little bit off of there. Now let's say that you had accidentally uh, made your file size um, too small. Uh, I'm just squishing it there just to have a smaller thing. Let's pretend that it wasn't squished. Um, then I would go to canvas size and I would need to add space in this case up to nine inches. And then you would have to make a design decision as to where you want to add the space. If I want to add it just to the top or just to the bottom or in the middle. I think I'll add it just to the bottom and say OK. And then I would need to make the appropriate design adjustments to fit so that's not very lovely, but you would do um, whatever tweaking you need to do in order to get it to be the right size. I'm going to go back to my original size. Okay. Now I'm going to go, now that I know that that's the correct size, I'm going to go back to InDesign and 
uh, want to make sure that I've selected this box before I file place. Then I'm going to go to file place and I'm going to find my file. Let me show you what happens if I don't select the box first. If you go to file place and I locate my image And it's going to give me this. If you see this and then you notice that your box does not have the little highlighting around the edges, uh, then, it, then it's going to place it really weird if you put it in. If it does place it really weird, you can Command Z back. At this point, if I see a little tiny preview like that, I'm going to go ahead and hit Escape, then make sure I've selected my box and do File Place. So. If your file size is correct, then it should come in and, um, and match the picture box perfectly. Uh, you also want to make sure that it is at 100% by 100%, that it hasn't been um, uh, squished. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between the frame tool and the content tool. So the black arrow controls the, the framing. And when you switch back and forth between black and white, you want to click off on an empty space. So I'm going to switch. You see how this is highlighted in blue? If I just move the frame tool, you see the content stays put and the frame changes size or shape. If I switch to the white tool, now notice this still has a little bit of blue outline on it. So I didn't click off and back on. Now that I've clicked back on, it's got kind of a reddish brown outline. This is my contents. So this allows me to move the contents around or resize the content. If you ever resize the content, be careful not to just pull the handle. You want to hold down shift as you're pulling the handle and you should feel it constraining. That way you won't get anything squishy. If you accidentally miss the shift, Take a look up here. If these numbers don't match, then you've squished it. So to set it back, just copy one of the numbers and paste it into the other. And it'll get it back to proportional, and then you may have to go and resize it. Um, it can also be helpful to um, use some of the fitting tools. So first thing I'm going to do is check my frame, make sure that it's 13 by 9. Yes, it is. So now I'm going to click on my contents. Notice I'm clicking off and then clicking on. And I'm going to go to Object Fitting Center Content. Now I made my content a little bit bigger, so I'm going to put it back to 100. And then I'm going to go to Object Fitting Center Content. There's also a couple of other fitting options. I can do fitting, fit content uh, proportionally. So if you had a smaller image, it would, uh, it would leave, it would, it would not stretch it. It would put it in there and leave it like that. Um, if you know that your sizes are correct and it might be just a teeny bit off, you can just do um, uh, fit content frame and then you know that it will go all the way to the edge. Okay, so once you've gotten your, your first piece in there, uh, you're ready to go ahead and add new pages and create a new picture box. Let's check, this one is 13 by nine, it should snap to the space. And while I'm at it, why don't I go ahead and make the rest of my pages. That way I can just copy my picture box, go to the next one, and do a paste in place. And paste in place. So now I'm ready to do my next file place. I'm going to use the hotkey command D. And I'm going to get my next page. And then I'll go to object fitting. Uh, fit content frame. You see, if you see it change, then that means there's probably something wrong with your file size in Photoshop. Um, if you've seen it change just a little bit, you can probably get away with that. 
Um, so I would go ahead and do that for all of the pages. Um, and then before, um, then if you make any more edits to your files, you're going to need to know um, a little bit about uh, linking. And also, in, in order to prepare your file to print, you're going to need to know about linking. So we'll talk about that in the next video.